Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike with Fowler Family Farm. And I'm building cornhole boards. Hopefully two sets. I think I'm just gonna start with one one set for now, but I've cut I've bought enough wood and cut enough for two sets. So this is what I've done so far. I've cut my one sheet of plywood. I'll, I used Baltic birch plywood, uh, three quarter inch plywood, you know, four by eight, a whole sheet. I cut it up into four equal sheets, which is almost two feet and almost four feet on each cut. So when I measured this, it was right at eight feet and right at four feet. So my blade is an eighth of an inch thick. So I'm not truly two feet wide on each board. I'm slightly under that, like a 16th, maybe even an eighth of an inch short. And then same with my four feet. I'm slightly under four feet. Uh, and then I used one by threes uh, and I'm, I've cut those. Each set will get two end pieces uh, down here like this. And those are all 22 inches. Then each set will get two side pieces. Those are cut at 47 and a quarter. So there will be a slight reveal on all four sides. Instead of it being flush on the sides, there will be a, a reveal around it. And I'll show you that at the end of the video. So I've, I've done all the cutting already. And let me show you how I did that real quick. So I get my four by eight, three quarter inch birch plywood at Home Depot. And usually when I get home with something like this, I keep the sheet of plywood in the back of the truck. And I like to cut it down from the back of the truck. So that's what I'm doing here. I've actually got one end on a sawhorse and the other end up in the truck. And then I have a two by four sitting on the tailgate underneath the plywood as well. And you just wanna make sure your blade is just barely going through the plywood. That way you don't uh, go through your tailgate as well. So after cutting the plywood from the bed of the truck, I'll have two sheets of four by four plywood. I'm gonna move those over to the table saw and cut them in half again, leaving me with four pieces of two foot by four foot plywood. Okay, now we're gonna start with the one by threes and we're gonna move over to the miter saw or your chop saw, whatever you've got. And we're gonna cut off one end of each one by three. So we'll have a straight edge to start with. We're gonna measure 47 and a quarter and cut two of those per cornhole board. So we'll need four total. And then we're gonna measure 22 inches and cut four of those for each board. So we're gonna need eight total. Okay, now I am uh, cutting the six inch hole on each of these boards. <clears throat> so when we do this, you measure nine inches down you measure 12 inches over. Rylan's telling the chickens not to fight. She's saying no fighting. She can see the chickens out there. Where's the cows? Right. Where's the cows? I don't have the cows right now. They're, they're getting pregnant. They're at uncle's house getting pregnant. You don't even know what that means, do you? My meow meow. Uh, the cats are at the barn. We'll have to go find them later. Okay, I also have this uh, board clamped down to my workbench, so it shouldn't move at all when I start this saw. I am using a six inch hole saw to do this cut. Okay, even though the hole saw I'm using has a drill bit in it, I'm still gonna put a pilot hole in here for that. It'd be way too wobbly if I didn't do that. Okay, when you use this type of a uh, hole saw that's this large, you gotta be careful when you're putting this hole in the wood. It's gonna, it can really crank on you pretty hard. You gotta have a pretty powerful drill. I don't even know if this one's gonna be strong enough to put it all the way through. We're gonna see. Uh, I've got a bigger one. I just don't wanna go get it out. <laughs> so we're gonna see if this one works. And just go slow at it at first. Oh, by the way, I did use blue tape 
so I didn't leave any rough edges right here. Even though I will come back and round this over, I still want to kind of keep it as fresh as I can. Okay, while I have, after I cut the hole on each one, while I have them up here, I'm gonna go ahead and round out the circle. I use a quarter inch roundover bit in my router to round the top side, which I've already done. I've already flipped this board over. I already did the top side. Now I'm gonna do the bottom side. That way when you do stick your hand through here to pick up the bags, there's no sharp edges, there's no splinters, anything like that, okay? Then I go ahead and take 320 grit paper and go ahead and sand it down real quick as well. Okay, I got the back side and the front side of this hole uh, rounded over with the quarter inch round over bit. Now on the back side, I've already rounded over the, all the edges, all four edges. So I'm gonna round over using the same quarter inch uh, round over bit. I'm gonna round over each of the sides, all four sides on the top as well. And that board will be ready to stain at that point. Um, I will, I'll, I'll take that back. I will do some sanding. I wanna sand the top surface uh, all the way to probably 220. Uh, but I'll probably do that off camera. I don't think anybody really likes to watch sanding, so I'll do that off camera. So. All right, let's uh, round over these edges real quick. I do have a uh, bigger router that's corded. Um, actually, it's just right there. I guess I could change it. What I'm gonna do is I'm doing this first board on video, and then I'm gonna take my other three boards and do them outside, because this is so dusty. Um, it makes so much dust. I'd rather do it outside and not have to clean up. I'll bring you guys in for a quick look of what we've accomplished already. And this is just one board so far. I just wanted to finish one board. So one video and then I do the other three off video. There are some burns because of the router. I'll get that out when I sand a little bit better. Okay guys, it's the next day. And now I've decided, I know earlier in the video I mentioned that I was gonna stain these. I've decided to leave the, the actual wood color alone, the wood grain to show the grain. I actually like it. So instead, I'm just gonna stencil on uh, my channel logo. So I've, I had a friend cut this with the Cricut. I knew I was gonna do this part. I just thought I was gonna paint it with white over top of the stain, but I decided against that. Instead, I'm just going to leave the uh, top of the boards, the wood color, and just uh, put my logo on top of that and put my logo in black stain. I don't know how well that'll show up on camera. Kind of a glare but you'll see it on the board when I'm finished. So I've already, uh, anyway, like I was saying, a friend of mine cut this on her Cricut. It's actually Tanya's best friend. Um, she cut it on her Cricut. Uh, I've already got all the stuff. I don't know, I don't really know what to call it, negative. I got everything pulled out, pulled off of the sticker that I want to be stained. So I don't have any experience with this kind of stuff, so I'm just kind of learning. Uh, I've got the contact paper on top of it. I'm going to pull it off so that what I need is left on the contact paper. And then I've already centered the board where I want this to be centered at. Uh, so let's work on that. I'll probably fast forward this because this will probably take me a little while to do. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the backing off of this, off the, the I, I guess it's just a sticker is really what it is. But I do know you have, I watched a video, so I do know you have to be kind of careful and and a lot of it kind of wants to come up when it's not supposed to come up. Ah, oh, sticky. Wow. That was a lot of work. For those of you who do not know, my wife is a dental hygienist and I'm using one of her dental picks. I don't know, I have, I have no idea what this is called but it was a lifesaver. It was so easy to use this sucker. Okay, now if I can just put this in the center, right where it's supposed to be, straight up and down. <laughs> wow, that went in 
went on a little easier than I thought too. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got my stencil on and I put some blue tape in here where I don't want the stain to go. I have a, I have a, a thin blue line that goes through my logo. So I have some blue tape in here so that my stain won't seep into that area where the blue line needs to be. And I'll kind of give you an up close view of that real quick. Okay, that's the stencil. And everywhere where you see the grain of the wood is what's gonna be stained. And then this blue right here, that'll be a thin blue line. And I'll have to do that separate here in a little while. Okay, I am using a uh, Minwax gel stain. And it's just black is the color. It's pretty simple. I'm also using a uh, makeup foam wedge. I think that's what it's called. I'm just going to dab it on here. I've got all the stuff everywhere that needs to be stained black with black stain. I've got it done. I'm gonna let this set for probably five more minutes and then pull it all up. <clears throat> and then once this dries, I'll be able to tape over where my blue line needs to be so I can uh, use some acrylic paint on that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and peel this up. Uh, this is probably the most nerve wracking part for me to see if it actually worked and make sure I don't get black stain everywhere else. Wow, that actually did some damage to my board. I'm gonna have to sand that maybe a little bit. Okay, all I gotta do is take all the little parts around the letters out. When I get done with that, I'll bring it back to you guys and let you see it. Okay, that's what it looks like after taking all the uh, stencil off. So you can see where there's a break in the line here. That's where I'll put blue tape on both sides and paint my blue, <clears throat> my blue stripe. I'm happy with it. Looks good. And I'm gonna have to sand it down a little bit in certain spots. Not where I stained, but next to the stain, because it the the tape did pull up some of the wood. So I'm just gonna blotch this on. And I'll probably do three coats is what I'm thinking. Because I don't want this to run at all into my other areas. So I don't really want it real, real thick each time. Now I'm kind of going up and down the same direction as the grain. Okay, that's coat three. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, I got both tops done. 
or two of the tops. I really want to do four boards. We'll see if I have time. So I got two of the boards done. Now I'm just going to start working on the frames and then I'll start uh, putting some polyurethane on them. Okay, so now what I'm doing is putting my pocket holes in all my side stretchers. Okay, I got all eight of these boards with pocket holes in them now. I'm just gonna give them a quick sand with the orbital sander, mainly on the side that's gonna face everybody when they're playing the game. Um, the inside I might touch up a little bit because uh, I don't want people to reach under there and snag themselves on these little splinters. So we'll start on the front side uh, of each of them and then, like I said earlier in the video, I really don't like to watch people sand so you probably won't see much of this sanding stuff. Okay, so now I'm putting the uh, frame together and I just start at one end and I clamp everything down to make it flush with each other and then I clamp it this way to hold it in place as well. Um, that's the easiest way I've found to, to use these uh, Craig jig screws because if you don't, it'll move on you. But they're very convenient and very good to use. I've also decided to do one uh, centerpiece. So I've got the frames built for both boards. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is spread some glue on the outside, down this middle cross member and the ends, and then uh, slap it on here and screw it down. Okay, I've got both uh, boards. I got the frames on both boards. I'm gonna go ahead and coat this. I've already coated this about three times and sanded once. Now I'm gonna coat it probably, I bet I'm gonna end up coating this about eight to 10 times to make it feel right. It feels really good already, but I wanna keep working on it. I want it to get real smooth so those bags just slide. Um, I'm using Verithane Ultimate uh, Polyurethane and it's water-based. I don't know if y'all can see that at all, but. That's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna give uh, both of these boards a coat. I coat the sides and the top, I'm sorry, the edge of the board and then the top. And then I've already coated the sides twice and I'll probably come back and coat them again as well. But right now I'm just focusing on the top. Okay, we're at the end of this build. Uh, what I'm working on now is the legs. I used a two by four and just trimmed it down to where it was about, I don't know, one and three eighths by two and a quarter. And then I, I cut two, two legs and they're both about 13 and an eighth inch long. Um, and from there, all I gotta do is <clears throat> find the center, Drill a 3 8 inch hole that my 3 8 inch bolt is going to go into. And that 3 8 inch bolt is about a 3.5 inches long. Um, it's going to have washers on both sides uh, with a nut. Um, so what I want to do now is mark the center. And it doesn't have to be exact. You can just mark it anywhere in here because you're going to round off this end. So what I'm going to do is mark center in here, drill a 3 8 inch hole. And then we're going to round this end off so it doesn't have to be exact right in here. Uh, you don't want it too, too low because you don't want to give up all this space down here. Because uh, you'll eventually cut this to where it's, it's even with the top of the board 12 inches. That's why you want to be a little bit long now and then you'll cut it. You'll see in here, you'll see here in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to take my leg, the hole's down here. Three, th three eighths inch holes down here. 
Uh, I'm going to fit it up against this side. This is going to be where the leg goes. It's going to swing up like this. And I'm going to do this before I round it off so I can use this straight edge. So I want to put a spacer. It's probably an eighth of an inch thick on the bottom. And then put a spacer here. It's probably maybe three eighths of an inch thick. Now that leg is setting on a spacer and up against a spacer. And then I put this piece of wood here and I clamp this so that when I drill my hole, so that when I drill my hole through the leg and into the table, uh, the side of the table, hopefully it doesn't damage the side of the table very much. Now I'm just going to repeat on the other side and we'll be good. Okay, I want to show you the legs are installed now, but there's a washer between the nut and the board and the leg. And then there's also a washer between the leg and the side rail of the, uh, the frame. And that's just so it moves freely. So with the legs resting up against the back, uh, the, the back piece of the frame, this, the height of the board is too, too tall. We want the top, from the top to the ground to be 12 inches. So we're going to bring this off the table. And measure until we find, and move this paint can. I got a paint can under here to raise the height of this or lower the height where I need it. Until we get 12 inches. When you have it here, you want to come over here and check this side too. All right, so we're good. We're at 12 inches from the top to the ground. So now we need to remove this angle right here. So I'm going to use a straight edge, flat up against the table. Okay. And I'm going to go from underneath the, underneath this straight edge and draw a line. And I'll do that on the same side of the leg. On both legs. That way I don't have to move my table saw but one time. Now we're going to remove these legs. And, and then cut off the angle here so that the table will set flush with the feet. So let me show you guys what we're at, what we're gonna do today. We're at the meetup, the uh, sulfur meetup that Brandon and Stephanie from Rustic Woodworking Family are putting on. And I made some cornhole boards and we're actually gonna give these away at the meetup. You gotta be present to win it. So somebody here at the, at the meetup is gonna win these cornhole boards. I think they're pretty cool. I think I did a pretty good job. First time ever building them. I'm still learning. Uh, I'm not great at building stuff, but we'll get it there. We got Mike uh -oh. from Fowler Family Farm. Yeah, we got, we got Terry from MT Homestead. <laughs> Lori from LG Homestead. Oh, and Greg. Greg's over here too. Yeah, he's crushing you already. I beat you 11 to nothing last time. We went to 11. I skunked you. Oh, that's a vicious game real quick. We're only going to a... 11. We're only going to 11. That's what we went to, yeah. yeah. That was not wet. It doesn't slide very good. Second drawing is going to be for the cornhole board. And? Autumn Popper. Woo! Autumn Popper. Yay! Yes. Awesome. Congratulations. The, the, your core, cornhole boards are going to be in the back. Yep. Did they get the back off the top over there? <laughs> what? The back? Yeah, we got them. Yeah, we got them.
Okay, this is the winner of the uh, cornhole boards. Uh, do y'all have a way to take them home? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Yes. So they're going to get the two cornhole boards. This is Pafford Homestead, right? Yes. Right. Go ahead and check them out on YouTube. Uh, they have their own channel. You guys are over 3,000 subscribers, right? Yes. Yeah. Just, Bigger than us. Just so. trying to get monetized now. Yeah. Okay. We well, don't have our hours. <laughs> we just got our hours. We are monetized now, but it's still a slow process. So check their video out. They'll uh, probably do a video of. Oh, yes. Showing off their boards that they just won on their next video. Most right. definitely. All right, thanks, guys. She won. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.